Hello, fellow stampers, I'm Yana Smakula. Welcome back to My Favorite Things YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to create a faux painted look using solid stamping and Copic coloring to make a beautiful holiday card. This is the card we'll be making in today's video. It features a simple design with a beautiful, what appears to be painted like wreath. I'm no painter, I don't really like to draw, but I do like to stamp and color. And with the help of both, we can easily create a festive holiday card and a look like this. I'm going to start by creating a background for this card. For this, I'm using a sheet of light blue cardstock and a number of skinny strip sentiment stamps. I want to have a text background for this card, but because I don't have one, I'm going to make it using single individual stamps. It's very easy to do. I've already positioned a bunch of sentiment stamps on the lid of my Misty stamping tool. All of these sentiments come from the Biddy Holiday Wishes stamp set. I group them together to cover about a half of an A2 card front. With the help of a stamping tool like Misty, I can easily stamp this cluster twice to cover the entire background. Because I want to heat emboss these, I'm using my anti-static powder tool and applying the powder all over the background. This will help to keep my embossing neat. Next, I'm inking the stamp grouping with a clear embossing ink and stamping onto the top part of the panel. With this done, I'm now sliding the panel up in my stamping tool. I'm making sure it is aligned and I'm stamping the same grouping of sentiments again in clear embossing ink in the bottom part of the panel, completing the background. Now all that's left to do is add embossing powder and heat set it. I'm using clear powder with some pearl shine to it or some extra sparkle for this card. I'm making sure to move my heat tool around the panel and I'm not keeping it in the same spot for too long to prevent my paper from warping. I love the result. So easy to make and I didn't even have to use a background stamp. I actually stamped a bunch of backgrounds like this on different colors of cardstock and used different colors of embossing powder for some fun backgrounds for future projects. Next, I'm going to stamp a wreath. For this, I'm using a large wreath image from the Joy Wreath stamp set. The image of a wreath is very simple and basic even, and that's great because this allows us to add our own personal touches to it. My plan is to stamp the wreath twice in two different colors of ink and add some Copic coloring to one of the layers. I'm once again using my Misty stamping tool and stamping the image using green ink. At this point, we can add shading to the leaves and stems to create depth and definition on the image. Think of this as coloring an outline image, but instead you're coloring a solid one. It is important to know that it is best to use hybrid ink, the kind of ink that works well or is designed to work with alcohol markers and the kind of ink that doesn't bleed when it comes in contact with alcohol. This is the kind of ink I used for my stamping. This way I can be safe coloring over the solid stamped image with my Copic markers. If you use a regular ink, you run the risk of the ink running and bleeding when it comes in contact with markers. Alternatively, you can use regular ink and color the image using pencils. I'm using just three colors of Copic markers. These are my go-to markers and it's actually one of my go-to color combinations. The colors are G99, G94 and YG03. As I finish coloring one of the branches that make up the wreath, you can see how big of a difference that made. This took a simple flat wreath to a beautiful dimensional image with little effort. I finished coloring the entire wreath image and look how gorgeous it turned out. I think it's a, such a stunning image and because of its simplicity, it has a lot of potential. Like I mentioned earlier, I went to stamp the wreath twice. So I've positioned the panel back in my Misty stamping tool. I repositioned the stamp this time I want the branches to overlap those that I've already stamped and colored and now I'm stamping the wreath in a different, slightly lighter color of ink. I'm actually not going to color the second layer, although you can if you want to. I like to leave mine as is. 
I'm adding a large joy in the center of the wreath and I'm stamping it using clear embossing ink as I want to heat set this image. The ink on the wreath isn't yet dry, so you can see I get quite a lot of embossing powder sticking to the leaves on the wreath. I'm using gold embossing powder here. I thought about keeping it like this as it does add a nice touch to the wreath, but later decided to brush the powder away and did so using a dry paint brush. Now I'm using my heat tool to heat set the powder and melt it in place. The wreath image comes with a number of berries. I'm using red ink to stamp those all over the wreath to make it more festive. I'm using dye ink for this, and while it does add red color to the image, where it overlaps the dark coloring and the most dark stamping, the red isn't as vivid as I would like it to be. This kind of ink is translucent, it's not opaque. I can intensify the color and add to the whole hand-painted look using an opaque coloring medium. In this case, I have a red opaque pen and I'm simply using it to color over the berries to add more color and hide that green underneath. You will need to use some sort of an opaque medium. Copic marker will not work here. You can use a pencil or an opaque pen or even paint. Having done that, I just need to add a white highlight to each of the berries to make them look a bit more real. I'm using a white pen for this and just carefully adding a small or a large white dot onto each of the red circles. It makes a huge difference, I think. Everything is in the small details. Next, I need to heat emboss a sub-sentiment for this card and I'm using one that reads with love at Christmas. I'm stamping it in clear embossing ink onto red cardstock, covering with white embossing powder and heat setting to melt it in place. I trimmed the sentiment panel to a skinny strip, also created little V-shaped ends using scissors on both ends of the strip. I also want to add one additional image to this card, mittens. These come from the reindeer stamp set. I stamped the image in black Copic marker friendly ink onto white paper, and now I'm using a selection of Copic markers to add color. These are again my go-to colors for coloring anything red. I'm starting with R39, adding R27, R24, and blending the center in using the R22 marker. I'm also using the same green markers I used before to finish the coloring. I apologize my camera wasn't focusing on the paper, but rather on the marker. My regular camera is being repaired, so I'm using a backup one to film this. There's a coordinating die available, and so I used mine to cut this image out in my die cutting machine. Okay, it's time to assemble our card. I've already adhered the background to A2 white side folding card base. I also trimmed the wreath panel down slightly, and now I'm using scissors to make a large V cut. I first measured the center, I added a small hole using my tool in one, next I made a cut into the center, and then two cuts from the corners to the center where the dot was made. This is the easiest way for me to make a perfect V cut. Next I'm using foam adhesive squares to foam mount the panel onto the card. I'm adding a sentiment strip using foam adhesive as well, and finally adhering the little mittens in place using more foam squares. And the card is done. I hope this video has given you some ideas how to enhance your solid stamped images with the help of some simple coloring. Give it a try! If you do, please share online and tag us on social media, we always love seeing what you guys are making. Subscribe now and do hit that bell icon not to miss any new card making tutorials. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.